Welcome everyone to another episode of Firm Learning and today I want to talk about how to dress like a consultant. And of course we all know that consultants like to wear suits, shirts, sometimes also ties. So in today's video I do want to go beyond the obvious and also talk about the more subtle differences, the less obvious things that do matter though and really can make a difference when you choose your wardrobe for consulting. This video focuses on the male wardrobe, so it's the gentleman edition. I might also create a video about female wardrobe in the future. Let me know in the comments whether this would be a topic you're interested in as well. I might need some female support on that though. The topic I want to connect this to is maybe a little bit controversial, so feel free to provide your opinion, your views also in the comments. But it is at least my humble observation that in especially MBB firms, so these leading strategy consulting firms, McKinsey, BCG, Bain and the like, the quota of people with a working class background, so the quota of people of first generation academics is rather low. So the question of course is, why is this the case? Surely there are no hard criteria in the interviews discriminating against these kinds of backgrounds. It seems clear to me though that at least in academia these types of phenomena are well described. There's also a very famous sociologist called Pierre Bourdieu who coined the term habitus. So describes how different people have different habitus which can be loosely translated to social status. Though Pierre Bourdieu is very explicit that this status is to be defined far beyond only money. So there's much more to it than just your financial means. And a big part of it is also your cultural capital. So for instance how to dress in certain situations and maybe also how not to dress in certain situations. And this is arguably a knowledge that people with certain backgrounds maybe lack because of course this is not something that you will learn during your business administration studies. These are often things that you really learn at home, maybe from your parents, from your peers. Of course everyone knows that you need to wear a suit, a shirt, maybe a tie to your job interview. But people often lack the understanding beyond that, right? So what type of suit are you supposed to wear? What type of shirt are you supposed to wear? So these are exactly the things I want to help you with today. These fine distinctions, as Pierre Bourdieu would call it, that really can have a very significant impact on you personally and also professionally. So let's start with the suits. So what suits should you wear? And just to provide a little bit of context, I also want to talk about a slightly more formal attire and how this fits into the bigger picture of what you should wear as a consultant. I think the first thing to understand is that usually for menswear you distinguish evening attire and daytime attire. So let's start with formal evening attire. And there are usually three types of suits, dress suits that you wear as a man. The most formal one is a tailcoat. So this is what often is described as a white tie dress coat. A tailcoat sometimes worn for gala dinners, frankly rather rarely really used today. But that's the most formal attire that you can wear as a man. The second most formal, and this is maybe something that some of you have also more experience with, is a tuxedo. So a tuxedo are things that you will also wear often. This is worn again at more usual regular gala events, often also in the evening of a wedding for instance. A tuxedo would be something like this. Now we can make just a video about that Now I don't want to go too much into the details of how a tuxedo is maybe different from a more regular suit. But surely I hope it's clear that you will not wear neither a tailcoat nor a tuxedo as a consultant. And the number three for the more formal evening attires is a black suit. So if a tuxedo is maybe a little bit too much and you're on a very formal event in the evening, you might want to wear a black suit. So that's the evening attire. And now let's talk about the daytime attire. And daytime usually means until about 6 p.m. So that's the logic that you will hear. And the most formal daytime attire is a cutaway. So probably also contrasted to a tailcoat, cutaways, also cuts as many people like to call them, are still rather common. You often see them at more formal weddings during the daytime. So that's number one, the cut. The number two most formal is called the Stresemann, also called a black launch suit. I would likely insert a picture somewhere here because frankly I also don't have one. And then number three is a black suit as well. So where do I want to get at? Because indeed all these things are not what you will wear usually as a consultant. And the error that some people are doing is that they are wearing a black suit to their regular consultant job. This is a typical error because again black suits are usually formal attire for formal events, not for your day-to-day -day business, not for your day-to-day -day clothing. So what type of suit should you wear instead? Well these are darker suits that are not black though. The typical colors would be 
an anthracite, so dark anthracite color. Another typical color would be just a dark gray tone, for instance, something like this that you could wear, or also a dark blue. Personally, I really like dark blue just in general as a color and also for suits. I think this often fits really well. Next, let's talk about shirts because for sure there are many errors that you can make with shirts. And the first thing that maybe comes to mind is a plain white shirt. So can you wear a plain white shirt? And here I'd say, mm, yes, but maybe it's not the best choice. I mean, first of all, truth is also in MBB firms, or maybe especially MBB firms, many people wear white shirts. So this is for sure not uncommon. You will see many people wearing them. But now linking this back to this point on more formal attire, traditionally plain white shirts are shirts that are worn for formal attire. And indeed, so what should you wear instead. So let me just show a couple of examples. So usually what's recommended maybe rather instead of a plain white is a simple light blue. So be careful here with the tone of blue. The tone really matters. In principle you want to go with a very light blue like this. So this would be a good alternative. Another nice touch is a light stripe. Something like this. So blue and white stripes. This also makes a very nice day-to-day -day shirt that you can very well wear also during business times. Where for instance, you should be a bit careful just to provide an example. is a shirt like this. This is also blue and probably still borderline okay, but notice how this blue already is a little bit darker than this other blue. And I'm not sure whether you can see it well in the video, but this blue is a little bit darker. And this directly makes it a little bit more sportive. And again, we don't want to go with too much of sportive shirts in these occasions. But now let's talk about patterns of shirts. And I do think that you can also wear patterns which are maybe a little more extravagant than just simple stripes. So let's look at an example like this. Again, not sure where you can see it in the video, but this is a very light, light blue pattern that is a bit more complex though, with more cross type of things in here. While this is very light, I'd say this is still okay. Here the point is how visible these patterns are. And again, let's contrast that for instance with a shirt like this, with now very, very bold stripes pattern. This is too much. This is too sportive. This is not a type of shirt that you should wear. Let's talk about something else. And this is now the collar. And here also one very typical error. And now here I'm deliberately choosing this shirt, which is already sportive, is this type of collar with two buttons in the color. This type of collar is called a button down color. So if you wear this, the first very big faux pas is if you wear such a shirt without closing down your buttons of the color. So this is just an absolute no-go. This is, has nothing to do with consulting, but also just in your leisure and so on. Button-down shirts are always supposed to be worn with closed buttons here at the collar. But I would even go one step beyond and to say that this type of collar in general is considered to be a very sportive collar type. So I would claim that in general, shorts with a button-down color should not be worn in more you know, formal, consulting, day-to-day -day business attire. Let's now talk about shirts with colored buttons. So here again, you see a very sportive version of a shirt. See how more sportive versions more often come also with button-down. Again, it just fits it because it's also a sportive collar type. But indeed here with this example, you have these dark black buttons. But one thing that I think is just, just don't do it. You see quite frequently are shirts that maybe are even white, right? So white shirts, which makes them already very formal. And then they come with, for instance, black buttons or somehow colored buttons. And I guess maybe some people believe that this is like a great stylistic choice. Here again, just don't do it. So now let's next talk about the cuffs of your shirt. And probably the two most common variations are so-called barrel cuffs, so more sportive ones, and also double cuffs. So I need to look at the screen to know all these English terms. But here the simple double cuff would be something like this. So a cuff that then you fold and then put together and then connect via cufflinks. So this is usually the more formal type of cuffs. And the other type that is considered the more sportive one is the single cuff or barrel cuff as I learned it's called in English. And that's the cuff where just with simple buttons without folding them, you can connect them. Today, it's very common to just wear these simple cuffs also for your shirt. So this is absolutely fine. This is absolutely what you can wear. So be aware if you want to be a bit more formal, a bit more dressy, these types of cuffs, the double cuffs work as well. And then of course you have the opportunity to combine this with some cufflinks, 
but just a nice way of having some jewelry maybe, even as a man on your cuffs. Now, I don't want to go here too much into the details. Surely don't overdo it with your cufflinks, right? I mean, you can be extremely extravagant. I mean, here also choose maybe some more simple, more decent motifs, but I trust in general that's an important distinction to know as well. Let's now discuss ties. And here probably the reality also for MBB consulting is that ties are not that commonly worn anymore. And here often you will adjust a little bit more to the client office or what the client is doing. If they're wearing ties, then you will likely wear a tie as well. Probably the majority of the clients I worked for that we didn't need to wear a tie. But even if you don't need to wear a tie, I think it's always a best practice to have a tie in your bag. If maybe on short notice you need to join another location, maybe join a workshop, a meeting, whatever, maybe even at another client that you are ready to wear a tie whenever this is required. So if you do wear a tie, similar with the other things, I would choose more plain, more regular colors. So here, for instance, dark green, dark blue, some very light, more decent motifs surely are okay, as maybe here you see this very light green and blue motif that you see here on this tie. But this is what I would go for. Surely I would be a bit careful when your motifs are more colorful, more playful, maybe like something like this. This would be a more sportive tie. That probably is not the best fit for consulting. So let's now talk about the shoes, because surely this is also an important part of your outfit. And here, frankly, I would in general just go with dark black shoes. This is where you usually will not go wrong. So very classical, typical shoe type like this. I believe these are called Oxfords. Now probably the real experts in the comments will tell me that this is not right or maybe called differently. Let me know here, yeah, I'd be interested. But this is just a very typical, nice format. Maybe a little bit more sportive are these Brokes, as I believe they're called. Also similar with a bit more appliances here at the top part of the shoe. So this for sure is absolutely fine. You can wear this. We would be a bit careful are brown shoes, but this to some extent can be okay as well. It often looks very sportive and it requires a little bit more of stylistic command to really combine them in the right way. If you do want to be a bit more extravagant, surely there are also some other models, like some nice monks, for instance, they can work quite well. I will try to include a couple of pictures here for these types of shoes. But if in doubt, go for very nice, clean, simple Oxfords and you will do nothing wrong. Let's now next talk about belts, because usually you will use belts to hold your suit into position. Some suits don't require one, but I'd say most of them that you will buy do. And here there's one very basic and simple rule, and this is that the belt should have both the color and the material of the shoes that you are wearing. The color and the material of the shoes that you're wearing. So if you just follow my recommendation and go with very plain and black leather shoes, then just pick a plain black leather belt and you will be fine. If you do choose brown shoes, then of course also choose a brown belt. If you go for buckskin material, make sure that your belt is from buckskin leather as well. Again, color and material of your shoes and your belt should match. This is the very basic simple rule that you should follow. So last but not least, let's talk about accessories. So what are the additional things that you can wear? We already talked about cufflinks. Another big question that I often get are pocket squares. So should you wear pocket squares or not? The idea of pocket squares is that this is something that you might be able to put here into the pocket of your suit. So you see this sometimes. My general recommendation here would be to not do it in consulting. I think it's very unusual. Only very, very few people will do it. My general recommendation for these more business type of situations would be to not wear pocket squares and not use pocket squares like this. And last but not least, another point are the watches. So I think a watch, of course, is always something that nicely complements a, a man's, a gentleman's outfit. So of course, you need to be a bit careful with what type of watch you are wearing. So what's very popular and I think no problem at all are smart watches. So for instance, you own an Apple watch, that's surely no problem at all and can also be quite handy for checking emails, checking your calendar and so on. If you want to wear a more traditional mechanical watch, that's of course absolutely okay as well. Just two recommendations that I would give you from my humble experience is first, I probably would avoid watches that cost more than 10,000 euro or $10,000, so very expensive watches. Again, in general, you want to avoid creating the impression in front of your clients that you are extremely rich, extremely loaded. And then also second, certain brands, even though maybe they are below 10,000 euro, just to provide a very general threshold, they are a bit controversial and they are associated with 
certain thoughts that some people have. So I think here the classical one are Rolex watches. I think in general Rolex watches are great. I can understand why many people like them. But maybe if you have one, rather keep it to yourself for your leisure time, maybe with your friends if you hang out in the evening, but maybe not during your work day if you work in consulting. Again, this might just create the wrong impression for you. And I hope you can see my point from the beginning that to say it with Pierre Bourdieu, the differences can often be quite subtle. But I would be interested in your opinion. I mean, do you agree? I by no means want to claim that I am the biggest fashion master. Happy to also learn more about these things from you. As always, if you took any value out of this video at all, please hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm and also subscribe to stay up to date with all my content. Big, big thanks to all the members of the channel. Thank you for supporting the course. My name is Heinrich. Here on my channel, I release weekly content every Saturday. So see you again next week. Until then, all the best to you and bye-bye.